I'm currently working on a backdrop for a set for a podcast, and the idea is to take some XPS foam and turn it into bricks. So I started out by getting a couple of 4x8 sheets of the foam, and this is 3 quarter inch, and I just picked it up over at Lowe's, but you can get them at pretty much any of the big box stores. They come in various thicknesses. You don't need to go two inches um, for what we're doing here. It needs to be light, it needs to be mobile, and while foam is just light by nature, I figured we'd go with three quarters of an inch because it's not like we're going to be driving this thing all over town. It's going to stay in one place, but it will need to be moved around in the place that it's at. I started out by making a ridiculous mistake that I picked up on a little bit later, and that is trying to measure the grid out. Instead, I decided to go outside and get a brick from the backyard, because what better analog for a brick than a brick? So after I corrected for my mistake, I went and got the Dremel tool and started to grind out all the grout lines, or rather mortar lines, and use the brick again to make sure that I had the spacing and the size as accurate as possible. You know, while I'm thinking about it, if you like this kind of content and you're into this type of thing, consider subscribing to the channel or at the very least giving me a like. Now one thing to keep in mind, the look that's being gone for here is the old rustic 17th, 18th century kind of uh, brick. The kind you'd see maybe in an old uh, English pub or in a colonial uh, building or something like that. Uneven, irregular sized bricks. They weren't made in factories like you see today. I wanted the sizes to be different. I wanted them to be slightly off. I wanted the grout lines to be off. This is supposed to look like it's been around for a couple of hundred years. Okay, so at this point I took a brass wire brush and you could use pretty much anything. I like brass because it does give a little bit and it still does put the scratches in. I pretty much went through all the mortar lines and kind of scratched everything down. Then I grabbed whatever white paint I had sitting around, mixed it up. I think this is about four years old, but I just wanted to get a good base coat on here. Covered the whole thing. Um, I didn't care if I missed a few spots. I was really looking for 95% coverage. Uh, I did walk all over, crawl all over, and climb all over these bricks intentionally. I figured it's going to get distressed anyway, so I might as well distress it while I'm working on it. And that took care of most of what I needed from a distressing perspective. All the other stuff was done just by hitting it, knocking it, uh, hitting it with a hammer. So at this point, I decided it was time to start painting. And I was going with a multicolored here. I started out with a cream kind of color and then went through on a bunch of random bricks and hit it with some black. Now the way I put this coating on was pretty straightforward. I used an old sponge. I kept it relatively wet, not soaking wet, but just not dry, and used that as my paintbrush instead of an actual paintbrush. Um, I did have a big brush that I went behind a little later on as I was painting to kind of get rid of the obvious sponge marks. You'll see me doing that here in a second. Um, you could see that I'm not being careful about making sure I have even coverage. I don't care if I miss a few spots. Again, this is supposed to be old, irregular, two, three hundred year old brick, um, stain, soot mark, uh, maybe, there's, maybe there's been some fires around, whatever. At the end of the day, I wanted this to look old. So you can see me here with the brush where I'd go through with the, with the sponge like you see right here, and then blend everything together a la Bob Ross with a dry brush like that. So again, not being too careful with the color, I just wanted to get red all over the bricks. After that was done, I went through with kind of a coffee, caramel kind of white, really, really off-white, almost beige color, and did the grout lines. This paint was watered down substantially. This was about the consistency of, of milk, maybe even skim milk. Um, and I went through the entire grout lines, as you can see here, and drew them in. Um, then I went through with a wash. This is where I got really creative. Uh, the recipe for the wash is 
I, I it's not really exact. I took some black and put it in a Tupperware container, maybe um, uh, uh, like a two cup cup a two cup Tupperware container. You can see right there. I'd say about a third of it was filled with paint. There was a drop or two of dish soap, and then filled it to the top with water. And essentially, I'm going in here to highlight all the accents and the deep, dark cracks and scratches. I really want to uh, enforce that, that dirt and that grime feeling. And this wash, if you're doing any kind of antiquing, really works fantastic. Um, the kind of paint, by the way, that I'm using across all of this is just straight up Walmart craft paint. Nothing fancy, no $50 bottles of paint. The most expensive paint I used was that leftover gallon from when I painted some trim in the other room and uh you know that was $25 and it did all that trim plus I still got three quarters of the gallon left over for any other projects and here's the final product um this is only one panel I've got a couple more that are going to be built you'll see right here the look that I'm going for that really old antique age look now stick around uh and stay subscribed to the channel if you like this kind of content there's going to be a few more videos in this series where I build the uh, timber framing for the room as well as go in and do the um, little details that are really going to sell this effect. So stick around, stay subscribed, and look forward to those remaining videos. Thanks for tuning in today, guys. I hope you all have a great day, and uh, I'll see you soon.